During the time when the Nazis were in power, there was a colonel named Stauffenberg who thought that Adolf Hitler's promises of peace never materialized, his leadership instead brought havoc to humanity and leave a bad taste in the mouth of Germany. Stauffenberg also thought that there were no generals who dared to stand up to Hitler even though they realized his behavior had gone way too far, Stauffenberg finally considered Hitler as the main enemy of Germany and planned to make changes. Stauffenberg was in Africa which became a battlefield and he was waiting for the arrival of a general. When the general arrived, Stauffenberg asked the general to report a false report because Stauffenberg planned to safely bring the soldiers home. The general was reluctant at first, but eventually, he agreed to Stauffenberg's proposal. They then went their separate ways, but suddenly cannon fire rang out. It turned out that the shots came from German soldiers who were shooting at an approaching enemy plane from a distance. The plane kept going and when it got close, the enemy launched several bombs that made the German soldiers confused. Stauffenberg was not directly hit by the explosion. It was just that his body had been slightly injured. He then quickly saw the condition of the general, and apparently the general was already dead. Stauffenberg then quickly headed for the car to leave while carrying the general's aide who was still alive. Before he had time to escape, the bombs returned and this time hit him unconscious. Meanwhile, the Nazi military officers are having a meeting with Hitler over a banquet. When Hitler's group left, General Tresco and a colleague immediately prepared a bomb that was in a drink bottle. Once ready, General Tresco called Colonel Brandt and gave the bomb on the grounds that it was a gift for Colonel Steef. Colonel Brandt then accepted it happily and he boarded the flight with Hitler and his other entourages. After the bomb was handed over, Tresco apparently waited into the night for information on whether the bomb had successfully exploded or not. He and a colleague continued to wait for a call, and when it finally came, he seemed disappointed that Hitler's entourage had landed safely. General Tresco then immediately called Brandt and said that the gift of drinks for Colonel Steve had been mixed up, so he would get them back tomorrow. It seems you have the, wrong for Colonel Steve. the following day, General Tresco headed to Berlin. On his way there, General Tresco met with General Olbrich who seemed to be in conspiracy with him to kill Hitler. They were surprised that the bomb did not explode, and General Olbricht also reported that their colleague named Oster had been arrested. Shortly after, General Tresco met Colonel Brandt who seemed rather surprised that General Tresco bothered to take back the drink, he even invited General Tresco to open it, but General Tresco managed to dodge and take the drink away from there. After leaving Brandt's room, Tresco talked to General Olbricht and asked him to find a replacement for Oster. Meanwhile, Stauffenberg, who was hit by a bomb in Africa was brought back to Germany. Due to the bomb blast, he lost his left eye, his right wrist was amputated, and two fingers of his left hand were severed. Stauffenberg's wife, Nina, came to visit him and was very sad to see her husband injured. After being able to move again, Stauffenberg was visited by General Olbricht who invited him to join the rebel group to overthrow Hitler. Stauffenberg did not immediately agree because if they failed, the safety of his wife and children would be threatened. General Olbricht finally invited Stauffenberg to come to their meeting and hear the conversation for himself. When the time came for the meeting, Stauffenberg arrived and was properly introduced to the other members by General Tresco. At the meeting, Stauffenberg heard Karl's suggestion that they should lure Hitler out and face him directly. Stauffenberg then asked what would happen if they managed to get rid of Hitler, but the answers of the people made Stauffenberg left dissatisfied. For him, those people only wanted fame, and getting rid of Hitler alone would not be enough because there were other organizations under him that would immediately take over Hitler's leadership. Stauffenberg complained about it to General Tresco and he didn't seem to want to think much, he just wanted to prove to the world that not all Germans were like Hitler. After returning from the meeting, Stauffenberg met his wife and children at home. Shortly afterward, sirens started to blare and their house began to tremble, Stauffenberg and his family immediately hid to safety. Thanks to this incident, it seems that Stauffenberg solidified his intention to join the plan to get rid of Hitler. The succeeding day, Stauffenberg gathered with the rebel group. 
There Stauffenberg put forward his idea that they should kill Hitler and accuse the SS or the security organization as the culprit, after that they will start Valkyrie, Hitler's emergency operation to protect his government. All these plans needed the cooperation of General Fromm so Generals Olbricht and Stauffenberg were assigned to persuade him. Long story short, they met and talked to General Fromm, but he refused to join firmly. Even so, he said he would pretend their conversation never happened. Stauffenberg embarked on another plan to persuade his comrades to join him. Afterward, he discussed the plan with General Tresco, but the general delegated the plan to Stauffenberg because he had been transferred to the front line. The following day General Olbricht came and announced that Stauffenberg had been promoted and asked Stauffenberg to meet Hitler to ask him to sign a document. After General Olbricht left, Hefton came to interview as Stauffenberg's aide, but Stauffenberg immediately confessed that he was carrying out a treasonous plan on Hitler. Upon hearing this, Hefton looked shocked, but he still agreed to be Stauffenberg's aide. Shortly after, Stauffenberg met Hitler and managed to get his signature thanks to General Fromm who helped him escape from Colonel Brandt. After returning from there, Stauffenberg and his group gathered to hear an explanation of how the bomb worked from Kornheim because he would soon use it during a meeting with Hitler. At that time General Olbricht said that the plan should not be continued if either Himmler or Hitler was not present. The very next day their plan began, General Olbricht ordered the reservists to stand by, while Stauffenberg and Hefton attended the meeting with Hitler. After the meeting started, Stauffenberg came out to report that Himmler was not at the meeting. The higher-ups in the rebel group then ordered not to proceed with the plan, and Hitler also stopped the meeting before Stauffenberg returned. After the first attempt failed, General Olbricht and Stauffenberg were scolded by General Fromm for mobilizing the reservists without his approval. The following day, another meeting was held and Stauffenberg began his plan once again. This time he pretended to change his clothes to prepare the bomb with Hefton, Stauffenberg managed to store the bag containing the bomb and went out of there as planned, but Colonel Brandt who saw Stauffenberg's bag fall down instead moved it to another place that was some distance from Hitler. After Stauffenberg was outside the building, the bomb exploded and he immediately left with Hefton, they forced a soldier to escort them and claimed to have orders from Hitler. But the soldier saw in the rearview mirror that Hefton threw the tools used to activate the bomb. After arriving at the airplane, Stauffenberg and Hefton leave, leaving the soldier behind who seems to have become noticeably suspicious. Meanwhile, General Olbricht in his office did not dare to mobilize the reservists any further so Kornheim did so discreetly. The reserve troops were back on standby. Upon learning of this, General Olbricht was angry at Kornheim, but Kornheim retaliated because General Olbricht was unwilling to act. At that time, suddenly the phone rang and Stauffenberg called General Olbricht, he was angry because General Olbricht had not done anything, he also informed that Hitler was dead because he himself saw the explosion, then he told what General Olbricht should do next. General Olbricht then announced that Hitler was dead and the SS was trying to take over the government, he also announced a start of Operation Valkyrie. Shortly thereafter, the commander of the reservists received the order and announced to his men that Hitler was dead. Meanwhile, Generals Olbricht and Kornheim met with General Fromm to confirm their allegiance, General Fromm then called Commander-in-Chief Keitel and asked about Hitler. But the man replied that Hitler was still alive because his assassination attempt failed. General Fromm reiterated that Hitler was still alive, but suddenly Stauffenberg came and mentioned that Hitler was dead and the Valkyrie operation was already underway. Stauffenberg again asked if General Fromm would join them, but General Fromm remained opposed so he was detained by Stauffenberg's group. Afterward, the rebels gathered and waited for orders from Stauffenberg, Stauffenberg said that in three hours he wanted the government offices and SS property to be vacated. By nightfall, I want to know 
After that, Stauffenberg and his men were busy contacting each district and making sure they joined. In the meantime, the reserve troops were going to the SS offices and arresting people. The situation continued to be hectic and tense until two conflicting orders came to the receiving center, where there was a message containing the arrest of Stauffenberg and also Minister Goebbels. The officer organizing the messages then decided to forward the messages as he felt it was their job to send the messages without any further questioning. Soon the messages reached Major Reamer and he was also surprised to receive arrest orders from two camps, Major Reamer then realized that he was being used in the process of a power struggle. Even so, Major Reamer went straight to Minister Goebbels and said he would arrest him. The minister instead looked calm and was seen holding a telephone, he asked Major Reamer to take the phone, and the Major instead heard Hitler's voice ordering to capture the traitors alive. After being given the order, Major Reamer left. At the same time, the members of the message receiving officer asked their superiors to determine the camp they wanted to follow, finally their leader decided to side with Hitler and they would cut off all communication from the Stauffenberg side. The situation that had seemed smooth then turned around, the Stauffenberg group began to lose the trust of the people he contacted by telephone. Operation Valkyrie had stopped and the reserve forces were releasing the SS men they had captured. In addition, radio broadcasts appeared reporting that Hitler was still alive and would soon return to his work. Although the news had circulated, Stauffenberg still did not give up, he wanted to send another news containing that the news about Hitler being alive was a lie, but the people who had joined him now fell silent and left one by one, only the top brass remained, but General Olbricht also decided to leave. General Beck, who was the most supportive of Stauffenberg's plan, was silent and understood that their efforts had failed. Stauffenberg then picked up a gun and said that they had to get Beck out of there. Shortly after, the reservists arrived and they immediately attacked. General Olbricht had already surrendered and did not rebel while being taken, but Stauffenberg still tried to fight back even though in the end his left hand which could still be used was shot. They were all finally apprehended and Major Reamer and his men gathered the traitors in the room. Shortly after, General Fromm came to try the men, he announced that General Beck would be arrested, while Kornheim, General Olbricht, Hefton, and Stauffenberg would be executed by firing squad. Major Reamer had objected that he should take them alive, but General Fromm insisted on the execution. At that moment, General Beck suddenly asked for a gun, General Fromm then put the gun in front of him. Stauffenberg and his colleagues knew that General Fromm killed them to hide his involvement, but he continued to deny it. After that General Beck took his pistol and shot himself in the head in front of all of them. Shortly afterward, all those involved in the rebellion were arrested and killed. Elsewhere, General Tresco chose to commit suicide, while Stauffenberg and his colleagues were led somewhere to be executed. Stauffenberg was the last to be executed after Hefton came forward and stood up to be his shield. Stauffenberg's plan was the last of 15 attempts to assassinate Hitler by the Germans. Nine months later, with Berlin besieged, Hitler decided to commit suicide. Meanwhile, Stauffenberg's wife and children survived the war. <laughs>